Was her answer a doozy for citing a floozy? Well, during Sunday's Miss USA contest, I was there. Miss Ohio said that Julia Roberts' character in Pretty Woman is an example of a positive portrayal of women in film. Top five finalist Audrey Bolt was asked about the topic, and she replied thusly. I think there are some movies that depict women in a very positive role, and then some movies that put them in a little bit more of a negative role, but by the end of the movie, they show that woman power that I know we all have such as movie Pretty Woman. We had a wonderful, beautiful woman, Julia Roberts, and she was having a rough time. But you know what? She came out on top, and she didn't let anybody stay in her path. You know what doesn't let anything stand in its path? This. Lightning round. Lightning round. Diane, I think she hit the whole message of the movie on its head. Just nailed it. It was like, as long as you're a really, really beautiful hooker, uh, a very rich guy who looks like Richard Gere will pit, sweep you off your feet and you'll never have to turn tricks again. <laughs> That's a message for all women, including myself. The whole thing, I mean, the, of all the movies to pick, she picked Julia Roberts, and then the choice of words, she came out on top. Really? <laughs> really? I will say this in her defense. The answer's not as bad as it sounds when you actually hear the yeah. whole thing. Because what she was trying to say was even movies that do seem to depict women negatively do often end up coming out with a positive message at the end. But come on, girl. Really? A movie about a hooker? Come on. Yes, a movie about a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, do you think uh, it, she was just trying to think of somebody and Julia Roberts popped into her head and then she said the name Pretty Woman? Or does she actually believe it has a positive message that you can be a hooker and then you can be a not a hooker? I think she As long as you meet... I, I think she heard that soft core porn music behind her and just immediately went yeah. to a movie about a hooker. <laughs> and she was like, oh, I like clams and muscles. I remember that scene. And that's why she made it. It was, it's, it's awesome. I love watching stuff like that just for that answer. I, I never saw this movie, Jim, so I can't judge on whether or not this was a great answer. Well, Greg, the depressing part of this story is that when I was asked the same question, I blurted out the crying game. <laughs> <laughs> It's, but I have to say, I, I do agree with this uh, monumental dunce. I have to agree that yeah. it is a positive movie because uh, it proved to me that if you work hard, mm -hmm. you can pull a hooker out of the business. We always think that they're unattainable, but if you have enough, you can get one to quit. So, so basically, you, you look at it from the Richard Gere perspective, that he's actually, uh, he was working. Not yes, I just, I just think of the honeymoon. Like, just brush your teeth one more time, and then uh, one more time, one more time. You know, you're a little nervous. <laughs> well, now I'm beginning to change my mind. Bill, you've been called a pretty woman a number of times, usually by older rich men on yachts. So you can somehow <laughs> sympathize with her. Why I like the movie, I identify with her delightful curls and quick to laugh nature. Uh, <laughs> and I, she has that laugh. She has that, that laugh. laugh that they have in every commercial, the Julia Roberts laugh. <laughs> Some people find it horse like I do not. Yeah. I would also say that what happened to the whole ethos that we are a pull ourselves up by our bootstraps kind of country? That is her personified. In her case, the boots were leather and they were thigh high and they had a zipper down the side and they also had heels. Heels that would walk all over your manhood if you paid her extra. Uh -huh. That is an amazing movie. Didn't need to know that. Well, all it's right. true. <laughs> Next topic. According to a new poll, love those, 22% of Americans, that's almost one fifth, say that if they had to get someone to compose a new national anthem, they choose Bruce Springsteen, which, as you know, wrote the song Uptown Girl. Yes. Rounding out the top five were a Dolly Parton, a 19%, Stevie Wonder, 18%. He was in The Wonders. Yes. Remember The Wonders? Bob Dylan, a uh, country singer, 11%. Further down the list, Taboo from the Black Eyed Peas at 0.0001%. Mm. An injustice because I think he is a true American hero. Jim, as a Jersey guy, do you agree agree with this pick, Bruce Springsteen, whoever he may be? I think he's a wonderful choice for yes. the national anthem. If you want the anthem to be about a cobbler from Sandusky, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't think it's a particularly good choice. Although I did meet him on an elevator once. <laughs> um, that's when you know I'm about to go into a really boring story. Um, there's no story. You mean you didn't get your picture taken with him? Of course, I, I followed him on the elevator. I went, followed him back into the hotel, and I, I casual, and then rode it up to his floor, and he's like, all right, I'm getting off. And I'm like, bye, and then I rode back down. <laughs> I was wondering if he wonders if you're a comedian or someone who's going to stab him. Um, I could be both. <laughs> yes. Or neither. <laughs>
What do you make of this, Diane? Uh, who would be your choice? Someone from the list or perhaps an animal? <laughs> uh, LMFAO. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <coughs> no. No. It'd, be, it'd definitely be Why are they show. even coming up with this, Dan? This seems to be an injustice. What's wrong with our national anthem? Our national anthem is fine. Exactly. That's what I tell everyone in my militia. Yeah. When I go out there in the woods of Ohio every weekend when we <laughs> practice our doomsday scenarios, yeah. I just blare the original national anthem because yes. that's what we're doing it for. <laughs> These Blackwater guys are doing it for the money. We do it for the love of guns. There you go. <laughs> Bill, quickly, what are your thoughts on this? We need to change the national anthem. I'll tell you why. If you ask, talk to any singer, they say it's very hard to hit any of the the keys in it. And the lyrics are undecipherable. It's about the War of 1812, the war no one cares about. And secondly, it's the world's first sample. The tune is um, an actually an old British drinking song from the early 1800s. The guy took the tune and just put the lyrics over it. Let's have an American song. Well, I would we say do. we have God Bless America. That is not our national anthem. No. Last I checked. Well, I've got to move on. My suggestion: be. the band the Dickies, who did. Nights in White Satin in under two and, two and a half minutes would be great doing this because they do it in like 40 seconds, which is kind of mm. fun. All right, time to take a break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about something really 